Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad you're here on this Monday morning. Got a big week lined up and a very special guest in the studio. And you know, I always say that, but I want this one, I'm going to say a very, very, very special guest. And you'll see why. Uh, when she comes on. So let's go ahead and get our weather done by Haney Technical Center. High today, 85, low 76, water temperature hanging in there at 88 degrees. Every Monday, I'd like to do a Monday moon forecast, and we've got a full moon on the 18th. About 10 days from today will be the full moon. So it's waxing now, building up. And uh, this weekend, I'll tell you on this Monday, this weekend is going to be really good freshwater fishing going into that full moon 10 days from now. Okay, so go ahead and put that on your calendar. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. We're back to get some pretty decent tides. Like I say, today's the eighth, uh, but keep, uh, we're almost at decent tides today. Flat, neat tides looking on the chart. There's nothing going on, but Saturday, the first good tide this week's gonna be on Saturday. So it's gonna work out just perfect for us on the fish on the weekend, okay? The marine forecast uh, west at about 10 miles an hour. All right, let's take our break and be right back with our guest. Welcome back and look at our guest this morning. Good morning. Hi, baby. Hey. <laughs> Whitney Woodruff, famous from Cast and Call, but really uh, she got started here on Panhandle Outdoors. This is my oldest grand, uh, granddaughter, number one. And, uh, very special. I love them all, but uh, Whitney uh, has been with us a long time and she's. Uh, uh, everybody asks me, where's, where's Whitney and Cast and Call? Where is she the past year? So I want you to tell the folks. Uh, they're, they're here to visit with us for a couple of days and. Uh, Tell everybody what's been going on. All right, so about a year ago, um, our family, we bought a fifth wheel and we loaded up everything that we would need for a year, just the bare minimum, and uh, we set out to travel the country. Mm -hmm. That's, we just felt led to go and see the country. While My dad said that uh, right now, Ashley and Mason and I are at the age where we're young enough that we still want to go and travel, but we're old enough to remember it and enjoy mm -hmm. it and everything. So mm -hmm. it was the perfect time for us to do that. So uh, we were planning on doing a trip for a year. So y'all took off and went up through uh, around Arkansas because I know I got some good pictures of y'all fly fishing right. in Arkansas. Right. So, so we started, um, th we went through Mississippi and up into Arkansas. Uh, we went up through the Dakotas and we stayed out in Montana on a ranch for two months. Mm -hmm. And then we went to Yellowstone and just out west really we traveled all around there so we were planning on being gone for a year but about four months that after about four months that we had been gone um the lord just led us to start looking for property in tennessee mm -hmm. <laughs> and um so dad was looking on a real estate website or whatever and we found a farm in dixon tennessee um, we went and visited it we drove overnight from Montana to Tennessee and uh, we looked at the property and we ended up closing on it so we're now living in Dixon Tennessee mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's where we've been for the past year okay so that puts it in a nutshell but on your trip let's talk about it for a minute I know in Montana y'all sort of set up camp in Montana on a farm a ranch up there right. with some folks and all right and uh, so y'all would that'd be headquarters how y'all and uh, that ranch was how big it was 5,000 acres Okay, and y'all did ranch work and all that because yes, they had some kids all the age right. around the family and all. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. What all did y'all do there? Um, they had two daughters. One, Irene, she was she is my age, and then Sadie is Ashley, my sister's age. So um, we branded calves and we went on a cattle drive. We drove all the cows back to the barn so we could brand the calves. Um, we rode all up in the mountains. Dad and I mule deer and elk hunted. And uh, the man that owned the ranch, Mr. Lance, he guided us. Um, we just did all kinds of things. We went um, to what they call the Black Hills, and it's a piece of, uh, it's a place on their property, and it's black sand, just mounds. Mm -hmm. And if you dig under the sand, you'll find quartz. Mm -hmm. So we found a whole bunch of quartz, and we spent a whole day <laughs> doing that. So really, we just weren't on any schedule, and we could do whatever we wanted. So it was, it was a lot of fun. 
So. And all this time, uh, you, you were homeschooled. You right. were homeschooled before that. Y'all homeschooled. The, the guy, the plan was homeschool y'all on a trip and right. all. So y'all right. did that. Uh, also on the, on the elk hunt and, and moose hunt. Did y'all get to see any? Y'all saw a bunch Oh, my any? goodness. <laughs> that was the, I filmed. My dad had the tag, so he was carrying around his bow, so I was filming. And I, that's the best footage uh, we've ever gotten of any hunt. It was just incredible. There were bull elk. We could have spit on them. They were fighting just right next to us, and they didn't see us. We were down in a little little gully, <laughs> so we stayed hidden and watched elk and mule deer for hours. It was it was amazing. It was fascinating, wasn't it? Yes, sir. But he didn't get a chance to shoot one. Did he, he did not. They it's, stayed. It's harder to get a chance to shoot one than people think. Right, and with a bow especially, it's yeah. it. Um, somebody said that you have a better chance of being struck by lightning twice <laughs> than to draw a bull elk rifle tag. It's very rare. So Dad got a bow tag, and they decided to stay about five yards mm -hmm. outside of his shooting range the whole entire time. But <laughs> that's okay. Okay. And did y'all do any fishing up there? Or was it, or did, it mainly was just hunting all right. the yeah. weather started getting cold. Yes, sir. Uh, and I know you did the fly fishing in Arkansas because I, I saw the pictures there. What about in the Badlands? How long did y'all stay there? We stayed in the Badlands for mm, three or four days. Okay. We stayed at a little RV camp that there there weren't hardly any people there, and uh, so we kind of had it to ourselves, and we mm -hmm. stayed in the Badlands for a little while. That was really fun. It was really neat too. Okay, well, we brought a special guest with. Uh, in addition to just Whitney, we're gonna, we may or may not uh, let that guest appear. We we'll just see. But also, uh, we're going we're gonna take a break now, and we're gonna come right back. All right. Okay, welcome back. Sitting with my beautiful granddaughter, Whitney. And uh, we're so glad to have her around for a little while. And we, I said, well, honey, come on the show. She was sick this morning. She didn't feel good this morning. No, sir. You? And we're going to talk about that later. But uh, let's talk about your dad now. You still uh, got his clients and all that. Talk about that. Yes, sir. Um, although we do are living on a farm in Dixon, dad, uh, almost all of his investment clients are down here in mm -hmm. Florida. So he's down here all the time, very frequently, to meet with all of his clients and uh, stay on top of things. So uh, we also get to come down here because Dad has to make s frequent trips down here. We mm -hmm. get to come down here and uh, see you guys and yeah. spend the night at y'all's house just like old times. I know. <laughs> so. well, it's awesome to have them all in there and all. And, uh, they take up more room in the living room than they did <laughs> years ago. They're still yes, doing a lot, a lot of fun. And, uh, we got some video of Mason uh, doing some uh, Fishing. Also, Ashley had to uh, get back on the volleyball. Right. So Ashley have, made the volleyball team uh, okay. at a school in Dixon. And so. both of y'all been homeschooled and, and mm -hmm. Mason starts at another school. We'll talk about that later. But anyway, you've gone mainly from a, sort of an outdoor girl to a farm girl now, mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. So uh, tell us about being a farm girl. Right now, we're living on a 72 acre farm in Cumberland Furnace, Tennessee. And that's about uh, an hour west of Nashville. And we have three horses, 15 goats, um, 20 chickens, a handful of cats, and two dogs. I'm trying to think, there's got to be more. We have a lot That's of animals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, right now, Ashley and Mason and I, we all own a part of our goat herd. I own seven goats, Ashley owns four, and Mason owns the rest. Um, and so we sell the babies. Uh, and that's our way of income. That's kind of like our job, ways that we can make money. Uh, they're registered Nigerian dwarf goats. Um, so they sell for about 300 to $400 each. So we're making a, <laughs> a good living on baby goats right now. So yeah, I'm going to show you on the map real quick. This is Nashville. Uh, you see Cumberland Furnace right there. Of course, you see Nashville in the center. That's Cumberland Furnace, Tennessee. You can see where they are right there. Okay. So, in, okay, now. Uh, you got one of your guests you want to bring? I uh, do have okay. a guest. We, <clears throat> tell us that this has got a great story behind it. Yes. This particular guest has a great great story. Uh, put your towel down. You got your towel? Here's oh. our guest. Uh, her, her name is Annie. And how does she get the name Annie? She got the name Annie from the orphan Annie, okay. little Annie. Um, I came home from church one day, and Annie was a newborn laying on the ground uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, she had a sister that was laying next to her and her mama and the sister died not just a little bit after birth she was really premature yeah. and then the mama um, she all of her insides 
came yeah, out. Yeah, she died during childbirth. So we had to birth. put her down. So this little orphan Annie, the last one that's left. So she's been traveling with us because I have to feed her. You can see she's really hungry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you, well, you fed her already one time. I know. Morning. She's yeah. just a but, growing uh, goat. How old is she now? She is almost two weeks old. She's about nine days. Two weeks old. Well, we're talking about real, real people on the show. <laughs> We've got real animals on the right. show. Right. <laughs> so this well, is little Annie. Okay. Well, it's been amazing watching, uh, watching you care for her. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Is that right. you? you can leave her up there if you want okay. to. We'll keep talking and we'll see what she does. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, y'all, one thing I know y'all do a lot of chores. Oh yes, sir. So tell us about your uh, farm chores. We wake up in the mornings at seven, and Ashley takes care of the horses. She's the horse girl. And I take care of the goats. I love the goats. <laughs> and Mason will feed the cats and the chickens and the dogs, make sure that everything else is fed. Mm -hmm. um, and then it seems like every day we've got something new to do. Right now, we'll go home in a few days and get back to building a fence, a new fence for our goats. Mm -hmm. um, so that involves a lot of uh, putting T posts in the ground and stretching out fence and everything. Um, but we've always got new things to do and everything. Mm -hmm. So. So that's and what we're doing. Y'all found, of course, one of the first things I know when y'all go out of town, y'all look for a church and all that. And so right. we found a good church up we there. We have. We're going to First Baptist of Dixon um, right now. So okay. we've made some good friends there, and Mom and Dad are teaching a Sunday school class there. So it's going really good. Okay. And that's what people always ask them uh, all over about cast and call. Let's yes, talk sir. about the future. We know the past of cast and call. <laughs> You got to be honest with you, you got a lot more viewers than I thought because when, when y'all left, man, people calling me and asking, where's really? Casting Call? Where's <laughs> Casting Call? Yes, sir. So uh, what's, what's the future? I know you're of Casting Call. Whenever we had first moved to Dixon, we planned on keeping up Casting Call. Mm -hmm. But we had, whenever we moved and we started to get settled in, we realized that there was a lot to be done just mm -hmm. on the farm and moving and schoolwork and just staying on top of the most mm -hmm. important things. So we decided that we have to put Cast and Call on hold mm -hmm. until we can get settled and on our feet and everything. So we're friends with the man who runs the local access um, TV station mm -hmm. in Dixon. So we could start up Cast and Call at the drop of a hat if we wanted to. Okay. But right now we're just getting, we're, I mean, we've been there for nine months, but we're still getting settled in a way. So Right, um, right. You still got a lot of things to do. And all right. you, and I know y'all put it on the back burner and all that. Yes, so. sir. But, but that, we could start it up any time. Yeah. So. Because you have the ability to do it, and up there you've got different out, outdoor activities right, involved. Right. A lot of fishing and trout right. fishing and, and really good hunting around that Kentucky. Y'all yes, are not too far from Kentucky. We're not. And uh, so you know, we look forward to y'all be doing some more stuff and all. Yes, sir. Okay, I think what we're going to do, we're going to we're going to put Annie back in her cage and all, all right. and, uh, and we're going to take a break, and we'll be back for our final segment with Whitney. All right, welcome back with Whitney. We're going to do our fishing game time today, brought to us by Barron's Barbecue Shrimp Marinade. Whitney, what are they, babe? All right, from 4.54 a.m. to 6.54 a.m. and 5.16 p.m. to 7.16 p.m. Okay, real quick, we're going to do a little four-minute video. Mason's been up here doing some fishing also, and uh, we're going to show a little four-minute video, sort of a highlight of his, and we caught a lot more, a lot of fish. We just put a little four-minute video together. So go ahead, and we're going to roll this, and we're going to come back with Whitney. Okay, Mason and I, we're on the dock. We both got one. We both, oh man, mine's running. Mason, hold on. Uh, we both got one hooked. Uh, what you got there, Mason? Ladyfish. Got a native fish. He's been jumping. Uh, mine ain't started jumping. I tell you what, uh, yours I'll show about. Them you. No, uh, you should take my pole, and let's okay. leave that one. Okay, hold on. My pole's bending. Okay, you got both poles. Check this out. You got, you got both of them. <laughs> on it. All right, all right. There you go. He's out there. I'm gonna hold this one right here. Look at there. <laughs> he swam out. This one swam out. Look okay, at this one right here. All right. Boy, they jump. I tell them, Mason, this is a poor man's tarpon because they flat sure jumped up. They, we, I was trying to get mine in. We got two. All right. There he is right there. Hold on. Well, you guys just caught one while ago. Didn't have a camera. Look at him. 
We're in a school of ladyfish. It's a summertime on the dock. Just having fun. Fun time in the summertime. Ow, That's a good release. You broke it? Mm -hmm. Ooh, ow! Now watch him. Now he looks like he, he's, he's stunned a little bit. You think he's dead, but he's not now. He's going to sink down a little bit, equalize the pressure. All right, and then he's going to take off. See it? Want to throw him back. There he goes. He just took off. For a while, I had to wait for Grandma to quit to finish cooking cinnamon rolls so she could come out here. And I was just getting him, bringing him back and forth around the dock just to try and get water through his gills. Okay, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. All right, now let's get back to uh, recently this past Thanksgiving. We got some, uh, we got a call, got some bad news. It is Monday before Thanksgiving. Tell us what happened, baby. You were not. Um, the month, the, the day before Thanksgiving, uh, I was feeling very, very sick. And you've been I just, feeling bad for Right. Me. Um, for the past few months, I had just always felt sluggish and I didn't know if it was because I was being, just being a teenager and being lazy. I just didn't know what it was. Um, but a couple days, two days before Thanksgiving of 2015, I just felt absolutely terrible. I had been putting up with it for months and I said, I need to go to the doctor or something. So um, mom and I went to the doctor and um, I, they did a urine sample and the doctor came back in the room after I had given them a urine sample and she looked kind of, there was a little bit of a look of worry on her face and she said, Whitney, if you don't mind, I'm going to prick your finger really quick and check your blood sugar. And um, that's happened to me before so I was like, okay, that's fine. And um, so your body your pancreas, it regulates, whenever you eat something, uh, your pancreas secretes a, a liquid that turns your food into energy. It's called right, insulin. Right. And uh, so your body will keep your blood sugar between 75 and 125. You'll never go below or above that. Um, so whenever she che uh, checked my blood sugar, my blood sugar number was 585. And so she knew right away that it was type 1 diabetes and she didn't say anything at first she just wanted to get all her facts straight before yeah. she broke news that big yeah. to us so uh, once she did she came back in the room she said this is looking a lot like type 1 diabetes so there's a um, this is one of the highest blood sugars I've ever seen and if you get any higher you're gonna you're gonna pass out or you're gonna fall into a um, what they call a diabetic coma yeah. so she said there's a uh, emergency room waiting for you at the Vanderbilt Hospital. I want you to go right there and they're going to take some blood and confirm yeah. what I think it is. Yeah. So that's Okay, what and that's, that's what it was. So we got a call and uh, so we that was the day before Thanksgiving. Right. And so at Thanksgiving we're in an enterprise and, I, uh, and for Thanksgiving with the rest of the family they couldn't come down because of that. So we're in an enterprise and I, and I told Gail, I said, I said we're going we're gonna to go see our baby. 
I just I just wanted to hug her. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh we call you mama and we, we want to surprise y'all. So we just hit the road, drove. It was like eight hours from Enterprise, drove, and got in about ten o'clock at night. Y'all y'all want to y'all want to go to bed? Mason, right. well, can I go to bed? Just tell yeah. us what happened then. We we just wanted to hug her. Yeah, we didn't know yeah. that y'all were coming. Mom was just saying let's let's stay up for a little right. bit or something, and we we're like. Yeah. why and mason was just like i want to go to bed but mom didn't let us we had no clue why so you went up there so we drive up there and then i'll come just y'all saw us come running out. right it was it was a right. special moment in our family life they just come running out of the house and all big hug and all we spent all thanksgiving with them mm -hmm. tell the folks now what you have to do with diabetes so uh type there's there's two types of diabetes there's type one and type two type two is um about a minute and a half all right know. it's the kind that people develop that don't eat very healthy they eat a lot of sugar right. they don't exercise Type 1 is genetic, and I couldn't have helped it by eating healthier or anything. It's just something that was in my blood. Right, right. So, so after I eat, um, every 25 carbs that I eat, I have to take one unit of insulin. So if I eat 75 carbs, I'll have to take three units, uh, which is typically what I take per meal. Um, so that brings my blood sugar back down no. to a staying level. And uh, then at night, I have to take a different kind of insulin that lasts for 24 hours, and it just keeps my numbers generally stable. So, so you're pricking your finger how many times? I know. I have to prick my finger four times a day and check my blood sugar. Okay. And then after I eat anything, I have to take a shot. And, and you, you've been doing real good, and then you, you take a shot when? When do you take your shot? I take it right after I eat. But sometimes I'll go through a meal if I eat meat or yeah. cheese or something. There's no carbs in that so I may not have to take a shot every meal yeah. but if I eat more than 25 carbs I do and you got to do this the rest of your life right and, but and she has a great attitude about it you give you shot in different places yes, all, sir. It, it, uh, I know it, it stings and all <laughs> but it's been amazing to watch this and you know I've been we've our family been enlightening on top top one diabetes I didn't realize all this uh, but uh She's been awesome doing it and always Thank got you. a smile and she's always in her prayers. She'd always I hope you're in, in y'all's prayers too. But uh, we're proud of you and we love you. Thank you, Brenda. And uh, it's uh, we're so glad to have you back on the show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> okay. All right. I love uh, you. Love you. <laughs> now, she's got to go to the dentist. <laughs> she's got to go to the dentist and we'll, uh, and then we'll uh, then y'all got to go back pretty soon. Yes, sir. Okay. So all right. I'll, I always thank y'all for watching Panhandle Outdoors. We got a special guest coming on tomorrow. Going to talk about number one bass fishing spot in America. Y'all take care. Do something good for your fellow man. See you later. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle on Tours with Winston Chester. Panhandle on Tours features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle on Tours.